In this video, we're going to discuss what a direct financing lease is in lease accounting. So there are three basic ways that a lessor can classify a lease. They can classify a lease as an operating lease, a sales type lease, or less commonly as a direct financing lease. So we've already talked about operating leases and sales type leases in previous videos. And the main difference between an operating lease and a sales type lease is that with a sales type lease, the risks and benefits of ownership have effectively been transferred to the lessee, right? So the risks have gone to the lessee. So the lessor is effectively treating it as a sale and they're going to recognize sales revenue and cost of goods sold. They're going to reduce their inventory for the asset that they're leasing out, right? So the lessor is basically treating this as a sale with a sales type lease. Whereas with an operating lease, they're saying, look, we, we haven't completely transferred uh, the ownership risks to the lessee. So we're, we're not going to do all that, right? So we've got that difference between the operating and sales type lease. The direct financing lease is basically, you can think about it as you're transferring the risks of ownership to the lessee, but not all of the risks. And the reason is, is that with a direct financing lease, there's a third party, there's an unrelated third party, some other company that is coming in and is guaranteeing the residual value. Okay, so they're coming in and they're guaranteeing the residual value. So in, in effect, the lessor has not completely transferred away 100% of the risks because there's still some credit risk because now there's this guarantee from this third party. Okay, so when we have that guarantee from a third party, we're going to classify it as a direct financing lease, just somewhat similar in the treatment for sales type lease, except that there's a major difference. And that difference is, is that the gross profit on the transaction is going to be deferred and then it's going to be recognized over the life of the lease. Okay, let, let me show you how the, the initial journal entry would, would be different with some actual numbers. So let's pretend that your company is the lessor on a three-year lease that, that's going to be classified as a direct financing lease. And the reason it's going to be classified as direct financing lease is that there's an unrelated third party that is going to guarantee the residual value. So we see we have guaranteed residual value, but it's not guaranteed by the lessee. There's some other company that is guaranteed uh, that residual value of $15,000. So it's a three-year lease, three periods, 6% discount rate. Uh, we've got the guaranteed residual value. I, I'm not going to go through all this because we've talked about this in previous videos about lease accounting. These are the same numbers that I'm using pretty uh, basically. But I want you to know that there, when we do the, we're going to have to do an effective interest table. And for that effective interest table, we have a lease receivable. And that initial lease receivable is the present value of the lease payments and the present value of the guaranteed residual value. We add those two numbers together. That's our initial lease receivable. Okay. That's going to be important because that's going to become part of our journal entry. Right. So that's going to be part of our journal entry. We're going to debit. Now, this is if we had, this is the direct financing. So if we're doing a direct financing lease, because I'm going to show you the sales type lease uh, journal entry in, in a minute, but I want to show you the direct financing journal entry first. So we're going to debit lease receivable for 69262 And that's just the amount you see it's in our effective interest table. I told you what those two amounts that comprise the lease receivable initially. Now, we're going to credit the inventory for $50,000. Where did I get that number from? It, it's just a given. I just put in the given information that the cost basis uh, of, this, of this asset that your company is leasing out is $50,000. Okay. And again, remember, you're the lessor. So that's why you're crediting inventory. You're, you're treating as, hey, you're getting rid of inventory. This item, whatever it is you're leasing out, a truck, a machine, you're leasing it out. You're crediting inventory, which is an asset account, to get it off your books. Okay, and then you've got this lease receivable for the payment you're going to receive. But you see that the, this, these two, they don't balance, right? If we didn't have this number here, you see these two, they, the left and the right side don't balance. So we need them to balance. To make them balance, we need a credit of 19262 And the account that we credit is called deferred gross profit. Now, over the course of the lease, we will gradually debit 
deferred gross profit, right? So we'll, we'll start debiting at the end of the first year, we'll debit some deferred gross profit and so forth throughout the life of the lease and eventually be moving that to actual gross profit. So that's the main difference with the direct financing approach versus the sales type lease approach. Let me just show you the journal entry, what it would have been if it was just a regular sales type lease, okay? So again, the entry I'm showing you now, this entry right here, is not the direct financing approach. I just want to show you how it's different. So with the direct uh, sales type lease, you would debit lease receivable and you would credit inventory for the same amounts. Those amounts didn't change, right? We sell, the, there's a debit to lease receivable and a credit to inventory of the same amount for whether it's sales type or direct financing. What is different is with sales type, we're crediting sales revenue for 69 to 62, and then we're debiting cost of goods sold for 50,000, okay? Now that's two entries there. But if you were to, if you take the 69 to 62, and you subtract that 50,000 cost of goods sold, it gives you 19,262, which is exactly the amount that under the direct financing method, we booked that account, we credited that account, deferred gross profit. So each way, it's, it's kind of the same idea, but what we're doing is we're saying, hey, with this direct financing approach, there's some credit risk because that, that it's that third party, that unrelated third party, they guaranteed the residual value. And so we're gonna say, all right, we're gonna defer the gross profit and then recognize it little by little over the term of the lease.